Hello, today we're going to be talking about the role of customs in international trade. Uh, anybody have done any business which is crossing a border knows there is a, a two borders to cross, one exiting the, from your country, which you are manufacturing your goods or producing it, and then entering to another country, so there is another custom or a border to cross. And there are two customs you are involved, it's not one custom. And they all have got their own regulations, so it's actually impossible to talk about uh, the custom tariffs and regulations in a global way, uh, because they, they just each one is different. But they all follow certain rules. Now, the rule of custom itself is not just ch checking the goods and getting tariffs, uh, collecting money. Uh, they, they are there to, f the, to facilitate trade, uh, to make it as easy as possible for it to move. I know they would be seen as people who actually stop it. No, they, they, they try to get it to move as fast as possible. Uh, and uh, obviously on behalf of the government, they would uh, do their best to collect the revenue according to the tariffs and uh, quotas. Uh, also, they are there to come to to protect the community from allowing the undesirable goods, illegal goods, and the smuggling. There are two parts of one uh, goods which are illegal to come in, uh, uh, like the narcotics, uh, and then there are goods which uh, have to pay tariffs, and they are coming under the different quotas or different names. So they are there to protect the community both from. Uh, dangerous goods to come into the country and also uh, goods coming f under the wrong uh, quota and are there to obviously uh, secure uh, the national securities uh, because they obviously they cover people as well as the goods as you know science. so so don't don't look at customs just as a barrier they're not a barrier they are there to facilitate movement of the goods as fast as possible considering the job needs need to be done within the you know, to protect the community. Uh, more effective the customs work in any country, it will help actually the, and enhance the national competitiveness of that country. Easier to move, the goods can move in and out of the country. It makes it easier for the investors and uh, uh, businessmen, uh, people to work with that country. Now, regardless of which custom you you know you, you are facing, which you know border you are crossing, uh, there are some good practices you can do to improve uh, your situation and movement and ease the movement of your goods, and that is by it's very simple actually. Provide as much as possible accurate information. That that's the key uh, to make the. Uh, the, remember the custom officer doesn't even see you, doesn't know who you are, is looking at pieces of paper which are your documentation, your, your uh, shipping list or packing list or your, your invoice, your uh, certificate of origin and uh, different inspection sheets. So all those documents the, export, uh, the, the custom officer is going to be looking at, that's where it starts. He doesn't see you, he doesn't know who you are, he doesn't want to know who you are, but he wants to see what are the what are these goods in these packs where is it coming from where is it going to what's the intended use for it and so on so uh, you more of these information you put on your uh, invoice and your documentation easier it is for them to make a decision to move forward and sort out your goods the the, the really the passport for your shipment for your goods is your commercial invoice so it's like your individual passport if you're crossing a border and the border agency people look at your passport and is your picture doesn't match your face or your detail doesn't match you, you would be delayed at least. Your goods are the same way. So make sure your commercial invoice is complete. I have, we have got uh, on the course uh, samples of these and you can see what we mean by having the your commercial invoice properly done. Now the next item which is very important is your commodity uh, classification code. Now every country 
uh, their customs have got classifications for goods. Uh, and they can go very detailed. Like, it's not like, you know, shirts, men's shirts. It, it says men's uh, shirts with fabric, so many percentage cotton, so many percentage viscous, uh, made like this, so and so, so and so. It really break down. Closer you can get uh, the classification goods to your goods, to show, you know, to de uh, describe your shirt, easier it is for, for you to work out how much the custom and tariff and quotas would be, and also make it easier for the custom officers to say, yes, the goods are correctly classified or not. If not, they will reclassify it for you. So don't, 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 don't try to, remember they are expert in these things. Uh, I wouldn't try to pull a fast one on them. Uh, on your uh, documentation has to show uh, who, who is the consignee, that's who, who is receiving the goods, who is it sold to. Now, they, they can be usually the same people because the, the same person who paid for has got it, but it can be different. So the consignee, the person who's receiving the good can be different from the person who paid for it, but it has to be clear. There are certain things, if you are operating in, in Europe and UK, for example, uh, you need to have a VAT number for the, of, the recip uh, of the recipient of the consignee, for example. Uh, there, there are custom registration numbers, for example. There are some codes, I mean, like, you have to look at in that country what are the regulations there. But there, there are usually a VAT number in Europe, all over Europe, and there is a uh, custom registration number, which that means that company is registered with custom to bring goods into the country. And they are called differently in different countries, but that is something you may include in your, you know, shipping documents. Uh, who is the shipper? That means who is sending the goods. So the custom wants to know who is sending it, who is receiving it. So identity of these two people has to be very clear. Now then we come to the goods themselves. The value of the goods has to be correctly put there. Undervalued, you know, some people may undervalue the goods to get a lesser tar uh, sort of uh, custom duties. It, it, be careful about those things because custom, customs knows about the custom prices of these. They go through, you know, m thousands and thousands of shipments every day. So they can uh, override it and they can not only charge you the uh, correct amount of money, also they can fine you as well uh, or more. <laughs> so. The value of the goods have to be correctly there. If it is a sample or the goods which are not sellable, you can say resell value is zero. It has got a value, but there is no resell value for it. And customer may, ac may accept it and not charge duty for it. Uh, also, the description of the content, the goods. Uh, it has it mu mu must definitely include what's the product, yeah, and um, what is it for. Uh, what the material is made of, you know, is it cotton, is it viscous, is it uh, steel, iron, titanium, you know, they, they, they have got an effect on the, the tariff, so it has to have a clear description of the material of the goods. Made the correct classification of the product, obviously we talked about it, the right codes, the intended use of the product, yeah. Uh, kitchen knife. It says that is, this is a knife, but it is for kitchen and for cutting bread. Although it can be used for many other things, like it can be a weapon, but it is not a weapon. But you can have a knife, which is a hunting knife. That means it's intended for hunting. Uh, or you got a knife, which is for military, that is a weapon then. So, although it's his knife, but it has got different intended use. I'm not going to go to more example of that. I think you got the point on that one. Uh, the country of manufacture, manufacture. Now, nowadays the goods can be moving around quite a lot. Uh, you have to find out what's the definition of country of manufacture in the in the, the country which you're sending the goods and your own country as well. So, if in your own country that the it is. A, uh, you get the manufacturer license, that means although I'm bringing these pieces together, assembling it here, now I can say made of X, made in X, that means my country, 
then I can send it as a goods manufactured in your country to the destination country. Uh, Serial numbers and parts are very important. If it's a, obviously, if you're sending apples, for example, doesn't have a serial number. Uh, the quantity and the units of measure, like, you know, is it kilograms and or is it uh, uh, boxes, and in each box is so much, and in each container is so much. So the quantities and units uh, which is measured has to be clear there. The value per unit and value for total has to be there. Finally, the country of origin, obviously you would have a certificate for that. This is, that is, the product is originated uh, in this country. Now, there is other things as well. I mean, if uh, you are exporting the goods, uh, it is quite possible for some goods you need a, a final destination. You need to have po possibly the certain goods, the end user, who is a specific end user, what they're going to use it for. You may need an export license. There are many products which have got uh, more than one use, like a knife we talk about. So uh, we call it duality of use. And so one product, a product can be acceptable under one circumstances to be shipped into the country X. And in another circumstances, in another usage situation, cannot be. And that's we've got a product which can be used for more than one purpose. So the duality of use. In that case, probably you need to go to the appropriate uh, organization in your country to get the export license. That's a permission to send the goods out. Uh, otherwise, the custom wouldn't let you to send it out, or the forwarder wouldn't take it forward to the country of destination. So that was the taxation. There's a lot more about taxation, but it is very specific to the country which you are operating. But these information are readily available either on internet in UK. You can go and find uh, the codes and tariffs and everything online. And in other countries, if it's not online, most of them are, they would have the books for it. So we can go and find it. And there are experts with regard to these tariffs and clearance of the custom. So um, eventually probably you would use an expert, but I mean it is important for you to understand what you're doing as well. So I would suggest you do read the, uh, these tariffs books and uh, the custom regulations. Thank you very much.